Hello, every folks, and good morning. Welcome to another edition of Know Your Unit. Today, about the Griffin, probably the most mechanically inconsistent, but also a little bit consistent unit uh, throughout the entire series. So, uh, the Griffin is essentially the premier distraction unit, the premier uh, harassment unit. Uh, a unit that, honestly, on paper seems super friggin' weird. Uh, for all intents and purposes throughout the series, the one thing that's been mechanically consistent about these guys is that they've more or less been a flying version of the wizard with a hell of a lot of meat on them, which is a little bit of an odd thing to, uh, to point out, but basically they were the mobility specialist back in March of the Black Queen, then in Night of Lotus they basically had less mobility than a basic soldier, um, and then for some reason basically were just a slightly bulkier uh, kind of a wind caster exclusively there. Uh, whereas, uh, for example, uh, over in... Um, in OB64, uh, they were more of an AoE spammer, whereas, uh, and for that matter, they kind of lost their mobility specialization because unless you had a, uh, a Hawkman leading them, they didn't actually cause the entire squad to be uh, to be kind of flight worthy anymore. Uh, whereas back in the original uh, uh, Tactics Ogre Lucked, they were uh, god awful. Uh, they moved really fast, but uh, frankly, they didn't have the bulk or the hitting power to really uh, do very much. Uh, but then finally, in Reborn, they kind of became an interesting mix of all of the above, while also being the best medical support that there is. Um, at least in my opinion, anyway. So let's go ahead and get this uh, get this going here. So what is this unit? Uh, this is a unit that starts off with a movement of 5, but can go ahead and dash that up to a, a unit uh, or a, a movement of 8. Um, comes in with a, a pretty medium amount of health uh, uh, at max level around 2800 here. Bear in mind, this is again a completely uh, kind of bottom of the barrel stats a, a squad of griffins as we do with this particular one um, but they can uh, boost that up to about 3300 here they can make that go way higher their bulk is quite frankly a bit insane um, in fact uh, they're one of the best regeneration users that there is because they are going to be moving around incredibly fast they're going to be relatively hard to hit this is why for example if you give them something like a jewel of the avatar their survivability goes up to completely ludicrous levels uh, because frankly you can just fly them into a mob have them go and eat, just kind of serve as a lightning rod for a bunch of hits many of which will just end up completely whipping and then they can just uh, use their uh, like let's say something like gift of renewal to just go and boost their health you know higher than it was to be begin with. Um, due to the fact that uh, they are a monster unit, most of their strength is going to be coming from, you know, their physical self, which means that they have a lot of potential to do damage, but just like uh, something like archers, they need some uh, some help pushing that through, which means that uh, primarily they're going to start off slow but gain momentum. Due to their high movement, uh, again, with uh, dash and their ability to pick up whatever cards they like, they can basically lock themselves into a permanent uh, eight dash. Um, uh, they can, like, this is a unit that basically has their free pick of cards, free pick of targets, free pick of when they want to leave, not to mention some incredible speed. They've got some of the highest speed that there is. Uh, with a Crest of Fire, you can get the recovery down, down to a ridiculous 68. Um, now, anyway, so uh, this also means that due to the fact that most of their uh, strength is coming from, you know, their physical self, so to speak, rather than gear, uh, pretty much anything that's on the scaling side of things will affect them a lot more uh, noticeably than many other units. So, for example, giving them something like a free string uh, that's been maxed out for uh, for Crush here might potentially be a lot more useful, uh, you know, defensive-wise than many of the other defensive options that are available to them. Um, so basically, yeah, they're a they're unit that can only equip accessories, but uh, any cards, any accessories, anything like that will be far more noticeable on them. Now let's go ahead and talk about their skill list. It's not gigantic, but there is a good amount of uh, tech involved here. Uh, so Constitution, in their case, is going to boost their health above 500 once you're running into uh, uh, into the end game there. Uh, bear in mind, for the sake of context, because I should have clarified this earlier, when I'm talking about end game, I consider like a full playthrough of the game to be all eight chapters. Like, realistically, back in PSP, you could have ended the game back in Chapter 4 and been just fine. But so much of the end game challenge uh, starts off in, uh, you know, Coda 2 and beyond this time around, uh, that realistically speaking, I consider a full playthrough to be all eight chapters. Uh, anyway, so, uh, they've got uh, a 500 uh, health boost off of Constitution this time around. Um, Pinsir is going to be pretty noticeable on them, uh, especially if you're running a team of them. Like, if an AI team of Griffins is one of my favorite just kind of AI auto-clears. Just because they have a really, really uh, fun tendency to go and swarm the ever-loving crap out of stuff, and especially if they're uh, if they're empowered, they're going to shred things uh, due to the, again their speed, how many of them there are, and especially uh, if you have something like pincer on them, it's nuts. Uh, something like petrify or charm, 
may be worth considering in some situations. Uh, usually they're fast enough to escape anything that can catch them. Actually, their main predator of all things is, oddly enough, the Cyclops, um, uh, who can uh, typically uh, catch them with a uh, leaden, and that basically makes them a bit of a, uh, a well, I guess it's a, kind of a misreading of the entire meaning of the word, but I was going to say flight risk over <laughs> in uh, San Bronza at times, uh, wherein there's so many Cyclops uh, that come in with the ability to leaden that, honestly, it's a bit scary to bring them there. Uh, you've got Winchata, which is essentially a gigantic AoE splash, I think like a, 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 a tier 3 or 4 uh, wind ability. Um, as per usual, they come in with their, you know, gigantic endgame uh, wizard splash here. However, in their particular case, they're boosting it off of their physical power instead of mental power this time around, thank goodness, because in Night of Lotus they were absolutely atrocious. Uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah, th this basically means that they can collect a couple of Fizz Up cards, a uh, Crit card, and this thing will be shredding for five, six hundreds pretty consistently in a lot of cases. Uh, again, just due to the fact that most of their power is coming from their physical self, not many other, you know, uh, many other aspects. Um, additionally, uh, you've got uh, Stun Breath and Stun Breath 2 for uh, whether you want it shot in a line or in a bomb. Uh, both are going to be pretty solid for uh, dropping a lot of uh, paralysis around. Um, in fact, uh, something like uh, Stun Breath on uh, the uh, semi-unique Dark Grid, uh, Griffin is actually a pretty solid uh, uh, way to spread stun around through an entire party, uh, just due to its really low cost. Um, realistically speaking, they're going to have a pretty decent lineup to uh, land those uh, two tiles in a row, so it's definitely worth considering on them. Um, Again, uh, if you're wondering about the Dark Griffin, uh, this is uh, something that Andorus brings with him to uh, uh, to his uh, uh, tar fight, uh, the uh, the tar fields there. Um, so uh, yeah, he, for some reason he somehow got a Dark Griffin. Don't worry about it. It's a it's basically a cleric hunter. <laughs> um, uh, if you're if you're ever wondering why his uh, why his Griffins are so good at uh, seeking out your clerics, it's because he came in with a dark element. Uh, you can't normally make those. Um, additionally, you've got Numbing Hook uh, for basically doing a the a, a similar thing to a Dark Breath. However, uh, it's essentially going to be more on the physical side rather than scaling off of dark. So like Stun Breath would do a little bit more for, um, uh, I say scaling off of dark. More like the dark property makes the dark griffin hit a bit more with the uh, the Stun Breath moves. Uh, whereas Numbing Hook is going to be single target and typically going to do slightly more damage. Um, in the case of the dark griffin, the main reason that they're a little bit more special is because this, you know, Stun Breath, Stun Breath 2, typically will be seeing similar results to, uh, to something like Numbing Hook there. Uh, again, I feel like I'm kind of over-advertising it a little bit. It's not like the end-all be-all, um, but it's just something to consider. And then additionally, you've got Blood Siphon. Again, if you've already picked up those, uh, you know, like two fizzes and a crit, again, they basically have their uh, uh, their kind of pick-up cards, so I figure that they can pretty reasonably get a, a stack of cards. I figure in most situations that I've gone and, uh, and used them, they've been pretty solid about being able to collect whatever the hell they want, because you will see cards spawn on top of, you know, cliffs or whatever else that other units simply won't be able to reach or can't dedicate the time to, due to the fact that they're going to have a lot of really fast recurring turns, that they're going to be a hit and run unit. There's going to be a lot of cases where they're going to be able to pick those up pretty conveniently. And additionally, then you've got Dash, which I consider to be a bit of a must on them. And then uh, Feather Step, which is going to get rid of Leaden, which again is going to be the main thing. Like, you want this uh, if you're going through uh, uh, San Bronza and you're rocking your Griffins. Uh, definitely bring some uh, 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 bring some items to dodge and definitely bring some, uh, some Feather Step. <laughs> because it's going to hurt otherwise going through that place. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, just kind of throw them into a fight here just to... Uh, 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 start talking about them a little bit more. So, they've got a lot of benefits, especially when operating as a team. Um, basically, this is a unit, like I said, that's got incredible bulk, which means that they're going to benefit a whole lot more from anything that scales percentage-wise. Uh, like, realistically, the only cleric ability that's ever worth using on a beast unit is going to be heal 4, uh, once you end up getting it, uh, just due to the fact that it ends up scaling health, because frankly, even a uh, completely boosted uh, heal through whatever means, that 500 health would be, you know, massive on any of your infantry, but for any of your beast units, it's just quite frankly not going to be worth it a good, a, a good bit of the time, just due to, uh, you know, how insane their bulk is. Uh, uh, they've got relatively low defenses, which means that they're a really, really good lightning rod. Uh, so, if, for example, uh, you, you're having issues with uh, fights like Azelston or Cressida or what have you, a griffin will 100% sort out that problem for you 100% of the time. Uh, essentially, what uh, what ends up happening in that situation is that almost all units will end up being drawn to them. Um, that they will end up... Um, 
that they'll basically end up uh, being targeted again by practically dang near everything. Um, so they're constantly going to be a lightning rod. Uh, they can uh, carry obviously items like everybody else. Uh, unlike previous games, they can actually use items this time around. Uh, the only other time that they were able to was back in SNES. Um, but basically, this means that uh, if you need, for example, to heal up a, a unit really far away, or you need to suddenly have a bit of a pocket revive chain, uh, you can pop a. Um, you may notice I may ha I have uh, each of these griffins uh, rocking a. Um, uh, a, uh, a blessing stone, which means that if the party ever ends up getting knocked out for any means or another, uh, essentially they'll be coming in with um, uh, with a blessing stone over and over and over to just kind of revive chain the entire party, get everybody up at one time. Due to their really high movement, they can more or less make sure that everybody's up. If you ever have one unit that's about to bleed out, you have them fly in, you, you save them, done deal. All well and good. These guys are really, really, really handy, and especially when you're going back and you're kind of clearing back through uh, older areas or what have you. I know I just noticed I forgot to turn level scaling off, so they're going to look especially impressive right now. <laughs> but if you're going back and uh, you know clearing through areas, uh, they, they're especially going to be handy for stuff like this. Um, where frankly, if you're if you're ever having issues with like let's say end game uh, temples or what have you, and you're just getting annoyed at uh, at going and getting materials, or you wanted a solid AI team uh, for going and collecting those extra materials, just send in your uh, your tamers and griffins. They are going to absolutely shred. Um, even even without uh, forgetting to turn uh, the uh, the level thing off, uh, they're going to be uh, just fairly handy units. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit longer just due to the fact that they're usually going to be uh, more so matched with uh, other guys than uh, directly shredding through all of them. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, for those that are looking at this and are wondering how these guys are shredding so much, once you're actually in the post game, uh, you have the option to turn off, uh, uh, basically turn off level matching for any fight that you run into. Uh, so, for example, uh, we more or less just have a ridiculous advantage in this particular case. You just turn off level sync. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, probably uh, we'll turn that on for one fight just to uh, show this a little bit, just to kind of show what they do in a more realistic sense. It, this is actually one of those things that makes it a little bit different difficult at times to go and rate any particular uh, unit effectively, or at least make a video showing how to rate them effectively. Um, because a lot of times you want to show off, you know, like, here, look, here's these big sexy numbers, and then it, there's so many different aspects to consider about it, so many different situations that they can run into. Like right now, I'm not going to go out of my way to go set up the Cressida fight, or go set up the Azlestan fight, or whatever else, but they will basically be a free win in those situations. Or if you ever had issues uh, recruiting Syria, you know, uh, her getting knocked out or whatever, have you you're going to be running into a situation where you know it might be really really handy to go bring along a, a something like a griffin um and especially it's hard to uh, to kind of uh, correctly convey the effectiveness of speed units in this game because a lot of times it's kind of seen as this case of like well you know this unit did this impressively large number in you know this situation but then was it really impressive if you're comparing it with like the actual speed here like, realistically, Griffins and Cockatrices and stuff like that uh, will be able to double round most units in the game. Uh, that effectively you could count two of their turns as one of the other guy's turn. Um, again, in some cases, even triple depending on the situation, considering some units, depending on their turn uh, or, or on their uh, kind of action efficiency or what have you, can potentially see recovery times in like the 160s. Um, whereas, for example, again, they can get down to 68. Um, so they can almost triple round some stuff. And this becomes especially noticeable when you start trying to use a lot of your fancy skills to counter stuff, let's say, uh, in Coda 3 or 4, um, or roughly in that ballpark, however you want to count San Bronza. Personally, I, like, I know San Bronza opens up in Coda 2, I personally count it as a Coda 3 area, because uh, Coda 3 itself is pretty darn sparse, but that's also about the point that you really should be going through San Bronza. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, either way, uh, the effectiveness of a speed unit uh, can oftentimes be missed in those situations. Like, just the ability to have somebody be able to pivot with a status recovery item uh, at the right place at the right time can be a massive difference. Um, just the ability to, for example, drop a particular type of element in a particular location in a particular way. Like with these griffins, you may have noticed several of their moves are neutral, but uh, they also still have their uh, their wind and dark abilities, which are kind of their kind of traditional elements, so to speak. Um, so in in their particular case, there's going to be those cases where, for example, you want to run them as like water or earth or fire, and it'll be really beneficial. Uh, they'll be able to make use of those uh, neutral moves, like something like a numbing hook on, like, I, I want a water griffin in this particular situation. Uh, being able to use a, a, you know, a numbing hook to basically go and uh, potentially a, a stunning unit while also hitting them especially hard due to that elemental bonus. 
Um, and especially, obviously, you want to try to uh, set them up with some cards if you can. Like, especially Fizz and Crick cards benefit these guys a lot. Um, you'd kind of hope that Magicka up cards do, but I haven't really noticed any benefit out of them. Uh, though it is especially funny because, again, for some reason they constantly use intelligence in older games, and it makes no sense, because why would they? But again, I guess just old RPG logic or what have you. But as you see right here, even with matching uh, matching levels or what have you, even with uh, units that are technically, you know, even matched up with these guys uh, uh, going in what I guess you could technically count an endgame-ish area, but they're only... Honestly, this is kind of like this kind of like mid-game type of stuff. If we're being <laughs> completely blunt, but still, you get the general idea. While while they would lose on a numbers front because typically you're seeing that they're attacking and they're taking more in return, due to their bulk, they end up winning out percentage-wise. Um, due to their overall speed, they're getting way more attacks off. And due to the fact that they can oftentimes just swarm a unit with pincers, um, you're going to be seeing those situations where they're going to just get a whole lot out of something like a pincer. I mean, I've seen situations where all four griffins just ended up tag-teaming one dude at once, while the one behind them is just going at him like a chainsaw. It, like, it's it's absolutely nutty how that stuff ends up going. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning uh, that's been consistent throughout the entire series is that they are extremely weak to debuffs. Uh, basically, this applies to many beast units, but it's particularly noticeable on uh, griffins and cockatrices, uh, where if they're hit by a fear, they're hit by a weaken, functionally speaking, they're going to be out of the fight uh, in an offensive sense for a little while. Uh, breach and fear on a defensive sense, they can still end up surviving a decent bit better. Um, in fact, in some cases, uh, it may be worth even keeping a breach item on themselves to breach themselves to make them even more of a target. Um, so obviously it all depends on the situation in question. Uh, but either way, these are these guys are just really fast. They're really uh, good at what they do. Uh, at, in a very worst case scenario, their bulk is absolutely insane. And in a absolute best case scenario, uh, they're like they can be an absolute powerhouse. Especially again for like going back and clearing through uh, uh, through the uh, temples to go collect all the extra crap and whatnot. Uh, Beast tamers and griffins just shred like nobody's business. Like I've heard so many folks like uh, going on about how good uh, casters are in these situations. Yeah, dude, get yourself some birds, because <laughs> these suckers whoop ass as they're tearing through the place. Um, it, it gets pretty nutty, as you saw. Um, like, once you end up uh, turning everything off or whatever else, it's just, yeah. They may be uh, more resisted in many ways, but uh, if you can get ways, uh, can you if you can get them past that, uh, stuff gets really funny. And especially, it's, it's worth noting that uh, due to uh, the kind of weirder way that they work as far as cards and things are concerned, um, they will end up, while everybody else more or less gets a kind of bonus to their maximum damage and not so much penetration, in their case it's a little bit different, uh, where they are kind of noticeably actually punching through defense better as you end up collecting more cards. Now, this is uh, this is especially noticeable where, for example, if you're going against somebody like, uh, like Dorgi, uh, where you're going through... Uh, uh, through the final boss, and you may notice that, yeah, you picked up those Fizz Up cards, they only did one to begin with, but now suddenly they're consistently dropping like two, three hundreds. I was actually really surprised by this my first time through and completely didn't understand it because I always ended up running a Griffin and constantly ran into this thing of like, well, I don't understand why it is that, you know, some of these other guys are just having no uh, no ability to get past this guy's defenses, and suddenly this Griffin ended up kind of pulling out the wind, so to speak. Um, anyway. Really consistent unit. Uh, really, the uh, one of their main benefits can also potentially be a downside, though. Just bear in mind, uh, if they do end up going down due to their really fast recovery time, you do want to get them up pretty quick, uh, since they also do uh, bleed out a bit faster, aka the shaman problem. Um, anyway, so hopefully that uh, that helped to explain it a little bit, um, and why I love these uh, units so dang much. Uh, but yeah, fantastic units at all phases of the game for all different reasons. Um, and yeah, uh, it. I mean, they were really useful as far as, uh, as, uh, as, far as redirecting damage in San Bronza as well as dropping debuffs. You never know when a good displacement will matter a whole lot. Like, even just picking up a uh, crit card with a wind shot uh, can cause a lot of units to just be displaced all over the place. Especially in, in a place like SB, where there's going to be a lot of cases where, like, let's say there's heavy units that are, let's say, blocking off particular areas. You can essentially drop wind shots to cause them to go forward or backward or what have you. Just kind of reposition them in different ways. And you, the ability for griffins to kind of fly wherever the hell they want to uh, does create this situation where they can be really good at clearing out choke points. The AI is fidgety, uh, which means that if you will, it, that unless they have a particular AI setup, uh, namely the more aggressive one that causes them to just kind of bull ahead, they will in most cases kind of try to get, get themselves into a better position. 
And so they'll end up trapping themselves. Like, let's say you, you move a unit uh, over to a choke point, and they'll be like, well, I should probably get myself in a safer place, and they'll end up leaving the choke point uh, so that you can go and uh, get some of your other units through. Uh, even just by positioning and bulk alone, they can make a massive difference, um, especially due to the fact that they can outlast almost everything that there is. And not to mention, there's pretty much nothing that can one-shot a Gryphon. Uh, even with an elemental advantage, even with a fear, few things can can one-shot a Gryphon. Um, and by few things, I basically mean you need Breach plus Fear plus a Dragoon with Beast Slayer. That might be able to one-shot your Gryphon. And I say might. They usually may be able to hit, like, in the 2000s or something. But realistically speaking, yeah, no, that thing's probably still, uh, uh, still gonna need a couple shots to make that happen. So... Anyway, really good units for this. Also, worth mentioning, if you're having trouble with Heaven Generals, another uh, really handy use case for these guys, send them out against the Heaven Generals. You know how they've got a whole lot of orbs? You know how I just mentioned that they're, uh, well, that they tend to be a really good lightning rod and how they also have a tendency not to, uh, uh, not to really die from one hit? You know what, uh, what the AI loves to do with orbs? Uh, especially if you're, like, running into the Alosser fight and they're coming in and they're about to drop, like, six orbs on you at once? You know what's a, a really fantastic way to handle that problem? You just send your griffin forward, and then you heal them. <laughs> Literally, all you gotta do is send one griffin forward. They will eat all of those orbs at once, and then come back like, yeah, that was... The weather's weird around here, guys. <laughs> Can I please have some Gatorade? <laughs> and then that's kind of about that. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, they end up getting uh, knocked out by potentially if they're hit by like a gloom orb and, you know, let's say they're finished off by loss or after the fact, you simply go and revive them and immediately they're back with hundreds of health to continue on their rampage. So either way, great units, great at what they do, great uh, for the uh, kind of weird non-standard stuff they bring to the table. Uh, definitely one of my absolute favorites. And yeah, if you're looking for those endgame map clearing, just AI gigachad units, Look no further uh, than uh, than the Griffin, because yeah, some beast tamers, uh, some uh, uh, some Griffins, you can be clearing out maps in seconds. It's wonderful. Anyway, y'all have yourselves a good one. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.